I think people get tattooed because, you know, there's not a lot of real stuff left in the world. And it's all like a 24 hour news cycle. Nothing, nothing lasts. With tattooing, it's blood, it's pain, it's permanence. And when you get that needle in your skin for the first time, you have to be there. You can't just call it in. You have to sit there and take the pain and then sit there and heal it. And then you gotta live with the consequences of your, of your action. Hey, welcome to the East West Podcast with your host, Tori Sumi. Today's episode is going to be a little interview <clears throat> with my good friend, Kevin Marr, tattoo artist of San Francisco, California. I've known Kevin for oh, about eight years now. We met at a convention a long time ago, and he worked at my shop a few times. And we've been traveling together. And I just want to have a conversation with him about his career and about tattooing. And we get into the weeds a little bit about you know, current tattoo stuff and old guy tattoo stuff and that kind of thing. So I would say this is a, if you're into, you want to know a little bit about tattoo culture, or if you're a tattooer that wants a little bit of the, <clears throat> a little bit of the secrets of the trade and stuff, or you're an aspiring tattooer, this could be the podcast for you. So you can see here in Kevin's work, I'll put them up here. He does big body suits of uh, brightly colored, a little softer than what I do. Um, a real gentle, beautiful tattooing, uh, very standout, does his own thing. And uh, it's a real nice body of work he does, and I really enjoy looking at it. So I hope you enjoy the podcast, and uh, I've tagged him in it so you can go check out his page, and I'll put his stuff up afterwards. So without further ado, I give you Tori Sumi and Kevin Marr. Enjoy. Hey, What's Kevin up, Marr. buddy? <laughs> How you doing, bro? Good man, good to see you, dude. Good, good to, to see, see you, you too. You too. Where are you in right now? Are you in San Francisco? Yeah, I'm in the city. Yeah, in my studio. And you, excuse me. Let's start again. Let me just stop this one. We'll start again. Actually, we'll just keep going from here because I can edit this part out. You there? You there? Uh, you're frozen up a little bit. There you go. All right, we'll start from here. Okay. Yeah, froze. Yeah. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Kevin, how are you, hey. buddy? What's up, bro? How are you? Good. I'm good, man. I'm good. So you're in uh, you're in San Francisco. You go to shop in yeah. San Francisco? Yeah. Yeah. I have a private studio. I'm in my studio right now in, in San Francisco. Okay. Yeah. Do your studio have a name? No. You know, it did. I, I owned a shop for 17 years, like, you know, full-on walk-in shop with the crew and all that. And I sold that seven years ago. And I opened, okay. I, I opened a different private studio that had a name. It was called Resolution Studio because I had other people working there. And then yep. I just, I realized that the reason I did a private studio was because I wanted to work alone. So like having a <laughs> private studio, like, you know, it was what, no signs. It was close to the public. The doors locked, all that stuff. But there were other people working there. So it was right, kind of right. the same thing, just without like people wandering in off the street. And then um, it was also hard to staff. You know, because it's like, it was a weird thing. The private studio, now it's popular. But at that time, it was like, people who want to be in a private studio, like, they want to be in a private studio. Or they or they want to be in a shop working with a bunch of people because you get good inspiration that way. So I got rid of that place. And now I'm just in a nice, quiet, it's an apartment. And uh, okay, uh, it's just me. Yeah. Off the yeah. grid? Pretty much. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. That's There's the, uh, a couple other... Bro. A couple other tattooers nearby, so we got our little little secret spot here. Yeah, cool, man. Cool, cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. So you've been tattooing for, for how long? Uh, it'll be 25 years in March. I started tattooing on my 22nd birthday. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was about I was about the same age, I think. I think I was yeah. about, about 21, 22 when I started tattooing. Yeah. So you, yeah. You, do, um, you do big Japanese shit. Yeah. Sort of like the... Tell me, tell me about what, what your vibe is with what you do, like what, what your inspirations are, what your style is and stuff. Um, you know, I just do things the way I see them. You know, obviously it's all influenced by traditional Japanese, um, ukiyo-e, you know, old Japanese tattooing and woodblock yeah. prints. I just kind of like to take a little different twist on it. Um, I love that style. I, I think sometimes it can be a little heavy, you know, which is great. But I, I like things that are... A little more fluid, you know. Um, yeah. Try to balance both, still get enough black in there, still have some weight to it, but you know, have some soft aspect to it. 
you know? Yeah, your, stuff, your stuff's a little softer, a little more flowy. Yeah, you know? yeah. I've always joked around that I never understand why men want to get tattooed by me, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you tattoo a lot of girls, bro. You have all the girls that I don't tattoo, you get to yeah. tattoo. Yeah, you tattoo all the men, yeah. <laughs> I tattoo all the men, dude. Yeah. I mean, I've got a couple girls on the go now, but, man, easy, 97% dudes, yeah. middle-aged dudes. Guys yeah, in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, your style lends itself to that. It's super masculine. It's heavy. You know, it's like you macho, tell what it macho. is from across the street. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, your style is very flowy, and you know, lots of pastel colors. Real pretty colors. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's nice. Thank you. I, I I used to like tell people when they're you know like guys I was helping out who worked for me before you know when they're drawing like a lot of times stuff looks super rigid. I'd always be you gotta make it look like this. <laughs> <laughs> make it look flowy you know channel the bird man yeah the bird. <laughs> yeah so I, remember yeah, it's just, I mean the human the human body lends itself to you know a lot of different shapes and flow lines and you know i like to utilize that and you know kind of makes your eyes wander around the tattoo a little bit if there's some fluidity to it and you can kind of design something in a way where there's an obvious focal point but you can Design it in a way where, where you'll direct people's eyes the way you want it to move throughout the tattoo. Oh, sure. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you and I met in Sydney here, what, like? Yeah, uh, it was 20, been. it was 2015. 2015, okay. 2015 at the, at the Sydney Convention. Right? Yeah. 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 And then we kind of hit it off and... Um, yeah, like right away. I mean, I knew who you were, like I plan on meeting you at some point but came by the booth i was working in and i think we just hit it off right away i don't even think we're... yeah and then uh we ended up, you ended up doing a little guest spot at my shop and then we ended up going to japan that was fun yeah, yeah. And then you yeah. Uh, you well, and, i think uh, the second time we hung out because we met at that sydney convention yeah and we we're all talking and and um you know, I think you and Ian were like, man, I want to get back to Japan. And I was like, well, I'm going in May. I think that must have been in March or February or something, the convention. I was like, yeah, well, I'm going in May. Like, and you guys yeah. all showed up. You know, that was, I think, my last, yeah, that was my last time when I was getting. Well, it, would have been, it would have been the middle of April because I went the yeah. week before my baby was due. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Hopefully it's like it's gonna wait bold, bold move going to Japan a week before your baby's coming. <laughs> yeah, it worked out. The baby was born a couple of months before I got back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that was a fun trip. That's when I finished all the work that Shige was doing on me. Got yep. the name from Horiyoshi. Um, that was yep. a super fun trip. We had a good time. Yeah, yeah. When we, we visited Shige, we visited um, Horiyoshi. Yeah. We we spent some time uh, staying up late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely did a lot of that. And uh, what other tattoo? Now we hung out with other. T we hung out with Megu. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. Some of that trip's a blur. But... <laughs> <laughs> so your your work. I mean, do you do you reference other artists and stuff? Do you have a like a vast collection of references, or are you just kind of yeah? Doing your own I don't. Thing? You know, I don't have nearly as many books as most tattooers do. Dude, it's like I I've been to your house and you have an entire fucking room full of books, right? And I I uh, I've got a fair amount of books, but not as many as most tattooers do. I do reference other tattooers for like specific yeah. things you know there's obviously like people whose work you know i well, like you've got a bit of a she vibe to your stuff yeah. too yeah i mean she is a huge influence of course and then you know i'll just i'll look at certain people's stay certain per people's stuff for specific things but i yeah. try to i try to not use reference <laughs> a lot um just so that it comes from me you know yeah yeah i mean no, if i have sense. to do like a samurai or something like that it's it's you know i'll definitely like use some woodblock prints as for the bones and then well you, you need to get it correct right the details yeah. and the structure of the armor yeah certain things yeah. you can't make it up right of course right you know? right right but i mean yeah. your, your line weight and your color schemes and stuff look very chic you got that chic vibe mm -hmm. you know yeah he's definitely definitely a huge influence you know it's like and i think the important thing that i've found is you know i stopped following a lot of tattooers not because i don't like them or i don't yeah. like their work but 
I want to have a bit of blinders on so I'm not constantly fucking looking at all this other shit while I'm trying to do my thing. You know what exactly. I mean? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I really like, I used to spend a lot of time on Instagram and I felt like, you know, it's a, it's an unhealthy habit as it is, right? Social media in general. Um, yeah. So I just like, I post and I ghost, you know, I'll like, I, I post stuff, not as much as I should, but I don't really sit there and scroll through my feed. I do a little bit, but not nearly as much as I was before. Cause I feel like it kind of clouds my, you know, yeah, absolutely. my direction a little bit. So I'll get on there to look at certain specific things. You know, it's like, if I'm, if I got to do a dragon, I'll probably go look at Bill, Bill Canales's page and, you know, find a claw or something, you know, like just get ideas of, you know, I look at certain people's stuff or certain things, you know, yeah. but it's, it's yeah, very I... specific and, you know, I'll find what I'm looking for and then I'm out of there. Yeah, I'm the same. I mean, I, I look at yeah. a few people. I like, I like Ichi stuff a lot. Yeah, you yeah, know? Like, yeah. I've got all the books on Hori Toshi and stuff. So, I mean, I, I look, that's why I look at books, because the books stay the same, right? So if yeah. you're following a specific artist, and yeah. they start being influenced, and they start shifting their their style and their influences, and you just kind of tend to to follow mm -hmm. that guy. And mm -hmm. that's what you know, I read an article with Christian years ago. It was, he was saying he doesn't look at anybody's shit. No, no one does. Yeah. But huh. his three or four things that are his references and his inspiration, yeah, and he sticks to those to maintain his uh, the purity of his style. That really yeah. resonated with. Me. Yeah, that's why I don't. Yeah. Really, I don't even look at tattoos on Instagram. I look yeah. at memes and fucking end of the world shit. Yeah, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know what you said, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, uh, you know, I feel the same way. I think there's a balance, right? It's I get some good inspiration off of there, but you don't want it to. You don't want it to direct the trajectory of your work, you know, exactly. you get too I into one think. tattoo or, you know, it's like someone, this dude, um, we we're in Vietnam and, um, this dude was showing me his work and he had a couple clients there with body suits and you could tell like it's super like she gay style and beautifully done, but it just looked like he copied it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's like asking me for advice. And I was like, stop looking at Shige stuff. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I can tell that's like, it, obviously I love Shige's work. The work's amazing. You have, you have like, half a body from Shige, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, half my body tattooed by him. But, um, yeah. you know, it was just very, it's, I'm like, it's just, it's very obvious what you're looking at, you know, when you design that tattoo, you know? And I, I think yeah. if you want to be, an artist who people recognize your work, you know, it needs to come from you. you yeah. Know? Yeah. So you can there's a balance. Pieces, yeah. But you got to do your own fucking thing. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, if you're only looking at one artist, yeah. you know, then it's not as that even really your work, you know? Uh, it's a funny story, a little aside here. I, mean, yeah. I don't know if you remember like back in the, the early 2000s, right? When Philip Lou was the King of Kings, not that yeah. he isn't still, but I mean, he was the guy everywhere. Absolutely. And yeah. All these yeah. copycat tattooers that were, I mean, impeccably copying Philip's work, right? Right, right. And I, I heard a story, I wasn't there, so this is third hand information, but I heard a story that Philip was at a convention and he saw this guy with a couple of sleeves and he's having, he goes, Oh, this is great, man. When did I do these sleeves on you? And he's like, <laughs> You didn't. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. Good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I don't know that that's a great way to build a career. I don't think it's fair to the customers. It's obviously not. It's a bit dicky to copy someone else's vibe. Yeah. You know? I mean, some people think it's. I mean, every once in a while, I'll come across something that, like, you, you know, I think someone probably took from me, um, and it's it's flattering, you know. I mean, they're. I heard another story. Shige told me one time that I think he was in, I think he was in China or probably, um, but it, someone knocked on his hotel room door and it was a tattooer who had a client with him with a back piece. That was an exact copy of a back piece. <laughs> Shige did he like, came to his fucking hotel room, right? Knocked on the door to show him this back piece because he thought Shige would be so stoked. Wow. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Wow. Like, can you imagine? No, First dude. of all, why, do, why are you knocking on? How did you find my room? That one, right? Yeah, yeah. That's why. I mean, yeah, you know, it's like it's flattering and stuff. 
but yeah. still, I mean, like, I think the, the like I was saying to um, Alex the other day, Alex Rankin, we were yeah. doing this. Yeah, yeah. One of the greatest achievements you can have, I think, as a as a tattoo artist or an artist of any kind, is that you have a distinct style that people recognize. Yeah, that you yeah. can carry through in all your work, whether you're doing a tiger, a dragon, a phoenix, yeah. or just some and cherry blossoms. But it just whether it's your line weight, your your water, whatever it is that ties it all together that makes it yours. I mean, that's yeah, something recognizable. Something I've always recognizable. felt like that was the biggest compliment. You know, of like clients of mine. Yeah, I was like, walk through the grocery store. I seen this dude who had a sleeve. I just knew you did it. You know, right? I get that too. Right? That's yeah, wonderful. Of course. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think that's the best compliment is when people are. You know, they'll tell me awesome. like uh, other tattooers will be like, yeah, when I'm scrolling through Instagram, like, and I I see something, you, I don't even have to look. I know you did it. You know. Yeah. And it's the same thing for me. So I'm scrolling through, I'll see certain people, I'll see your work, I'll see some of our other friends' work. And it's like, I already know who did it before I even look at who made the post. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. takes a while to, to get to. Yeah, you, know you I mean? can't it, you can't force it either. It has to happen on their own. And people ask me that too. Like, how do I, you know, create a style that's really mine? It's like, I don't I don't fucking know. Like, it, it just, it has to happen organically. Yeah. Like, if you force it. a lot for 15, 20 years yeah. every day. Yeah, yeah, and, and that can work. <laughs> uh -huh. There's no short to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's really not. Yeah, and then know? some people also just never fall into a certain recognizable style. You know, yeah. there's some great, you know, tattooers who there's some amazing tattooers who I can't really tell their work apart from each other. It's all good, but it's all like yeah. very much done the same way. And this is what some one of the pitfalls I think of like my shop <clears throat> is every style, right? We do. Mm -hmm. Work fine line, tribal, Japanese, yeah. fucking neo trad, whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. So we get, we help each other. We're inspirational in terms of techniques and some stuff. But I think one of the pitfalls, if you have a, and you see this especially in traditional Americana style shops, mm -hmm. is everybody's work starts to look the same, right? Yeah. And you got yeah. six dudes, seven dudes, can't tell their portfolios apart, can't tell their work apart, mm -hmm. you know? I think yeah. it happens in, in Japanese style shops as well, where you have it absolutely does. If you've got Master Deshi, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Hori Toshi, you got his Deshis and his, yeah. his um, journeyman, and yeah. they're they're emulating the master because that's the Japanese path. Yeah, right? because you're supposed to, not you're because you're supposed to. Be yeah. giving you giving you yeah. permission yeah. to copy him, right? right? While yeah. you develop yourself, right? Yeah. But when you get these, uh, just a bunch of guys, you know, our age or younger, five, mm -hmm. six guys in Japanese all working in the same thing and all their work starts to look kind of the yeah. same. I think that's a hindrance to developing your own stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's just something I've noticed. It's not good or bad. It's just something I've noticed over the years. I've noticed it too. You know, like I said, I can think of a, you know, a handful of tattooers who are really well known, who I love all their work. They're all amazing tattooers, but... I, I, I can't tell it apart unless I already know who did that piece. Right. But if right. you show me five sleeves, one from each of them that I've never seen before, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think I could tell, you know? Yeah, I mean, Whereas if someone shows, if someone shows a sleeve I did and a sleeve you did it'd be, and they know our work, it'd be pretty easy to figure out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. What do you think? Like, like I said to you in the, in the preamble, you know, I want to keep yeah. this real positive and stuff, but. And this might just be me being an old guy, but <laughs> I've seen a lot of, you know, younger tattooers that are doing really clean, immaculate Japanese stuff, you mm -hmm. know, with the, the dildo pen thing, the wand, mm -hmm. and, oh, and not really yeah. like people this? can. That's fine. Yeah, I know you're one of your. <laughs> you're that guy too, but I mean, like maybe it's just me because it took me a long time to to get you know, to get where I am with Japanese. I'm still a student, man. I'm still learning, yeah. and especially, especially pivoting to handwork. But mm -hmm. I find, and maybe this is just me, maybe I'm just jealous, I don't know, um, just being honest. I, I find mm -hmm. it just doesn't have power. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's like a fucking paint. It's like a, you know, like a T-shirt or a, a fucking poster. Yeah. It's, it, it's it, too clean. It's too, you know, there's something to it that's missing. Right. Yeah. And I know what it is. There's a, there's a lot of people doing tattoos that have no soul. The work doesn't that, have a soul to it. That's yeah. what it feels like. Right. Yeah, because that's what I it don't is. Know if it's me being 
whatever, jealous, envious, uh, being a hater. I don't want to be a nah, hater. I don't think it's that. I think it's, it's, I think it's just very, like, to me, it's just very obvious when, you know, if the, the passion is there, the understanding is there, and if they've really, like, put themselves into the work. Like, I don't think a lot of tattooers are putting themselves into the work, you know? Right. They're not thinking deeply about it. They're not trying to send any message with it. They're, is it because it's too accessible now? Is it? Is it because there's too much easy reference for people to to copy, as you said? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean that's a good thing and a bad thing, right? It's like we we had it tough, and I also try to not be the 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 older dude who's like, you know, back in my day, you know, we had to do this or this or this, because it's like I was having this conversation over there. I just got back from Puerto Rico a couple of days ago doing that convention down there, and I was talking to some guys there where it's like, this is going off path a little bit, but it goes back to the same thing. Um, you know, like you just imagine, you know, people talk shit about these, like, you know, the, the new rotary machines and all this and that. And it's like loyal to the coil and this and that. And it's like, I'm old school. It's like, well, where's your cutoff line? If, if you're old school, like, because every generation thinks the new generation is, has it easy, right? Just with every yeah. aspect of life, every generation thinks the new, next generation is fucked. And you know, there's, there's some, dude, there, there's, there was old dudes when we were learning how to tattoo. There was like, these fucking kids got it so easy, you know, like they, <laughs> they, they have stencil machines. So it's like, where's your cutoff? Like how old school are you going to be? Yeah. Then, then fucking, if, right. you, if you don't like new machine technology, go back to cutting acetate fucking stencils then, you know, like yeah. where's the cutoff line? No, <laughs> so, that's a good point. Plus, even, yeah. even a computer for yeah. downloading I mean, yeah, you're, you're, I mean, dude, I can pull up some reference on my phone, send it to my printer, print it out, you know, like, like, we don't, you know, we used to have to go dig through libraries and obscure bookstores to find UK Elway books. And I, I, I mean, I love technology. I have a lot of technology. Yeah. And I love it. But I, yeah. I try to keep the process pure to a certain degree, yeah. right? I yeah. I don't draw pads. I just use my stencil machine. I freehand what I can. Yeah. You know, and you I, tattoo I, with I, a stick. I, I, I tattoo with a stick. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like I still, uh, you know, if I'm outlining, I might use a, I, look, I'll tell you what, funny story. The other huh. day I was, a, a back piece I started six, seven years ago, had the guy at the farm and uh, I didn't have any fucking mags there, any pre-mades. So uh, I, I went and whipped him up a fucking, uh, a nine mag, just yeah. a homemade one with some mm -hmm. really old needles that I used to have, the John James Serpentines, which were the fucking bomb uh -huh. 20 years ago. Yeah, and I made this nine mag, and holy shit, dude! Compared to a pre-made mag, yeah, this it's is better, just, dude. Like, yeah. there's nothing Mike, like it. There's nothing like it, man. It's like saying. Mike was saying, like, oh yeah, the pre-made needle, it's okay, but it, is it just because you, know, you have to? Remember in that story, he was going, you know, you'll get used to it, and he's like, uh -huh. yeah, am I just getting used to it to forget how good the other ones were and how shit yeah. this is? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, uh, and. Using the because you know the pre-mades are a little bit too narrow for the tube, and mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and the needles are too thin. And they don't really hold enough ink. Yeah, using the using this homemade seven or nine mag was just fucking unreal, right? Yeah. Well, it's also we we also have preferences for how loose or tight the needle is. You know, like yeah. I was taught to the dude who taught me made his needle so fucking loose. I mean, there'd be a half inch of unsoldered needle. Yeah, that's how I made mine. Yeah, and I started tightening up just a little bit because, like, his his five round lines would look like it was an eight round or something, you know? Right, his right. threes looked like a seven. And yeah. that's all he would use was threes, fives, Whoa. and seven mags, nothing else. Back, so You know, you know as well as I do, back 15 years ago, man, there was no fine line tattooing. You yeah. you, were, you were using maybe a, a three-round bug pin, yeah. right? Yeah. Made in the front, using a drill press as the fucking yep. tightening thing. So tightening you weren't thing, getting yeah. That. You weren't getting this crazy shit that's going on now with your little clickety clack thing. Yeah, you know I mean, you're, yeah, you're little, yeah. <laughs> you weren't getting super fucking fine, delicate lines that fall out in six months. You know what I mean? Yep, yep, yep. yep. I think you know, that's that's one of the things I think you're going to see. Like, you remember how watercolor tattoos have fucking disappeared, right? Yeah, yeah, literally figuratively and, and literally. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to see a lot of that with you know the fine line stuff and all this shit yeah. with all these. 20 year old girls it's, become 30 year old moms. It's going to disappear in both ways, also. The tattoo yeah. won't be there and the trend won't be there. Right. You mm -hmm. know?
But, in terms of like if they if they have it easier, I mean, there's there's some. It, it's crazy because people get good so quick now, you know. Yeah, and but think, it's like it's a little bit soulless. I find it is soulless. Yeah, because it, I think the reason they're getting good quicker is because you know the equipment's a little easier. Like, look, yeah. you don't think of think of like our apprenticeships in our first several years or or you know of, of tattooing. Ten years. Like how <laughs> much how much time we spend making needles, scrubbing tubes tuning machines, you know, drawing stuff on paper with no reference or having to find, having to go find books for reference and just dig through it instead of just being able to Google image, print it out. You don't have to work on your machine. You know, cartridges are disposable. They, they can just spend all this time. You know, people don't even paint flash anymore. That was another thing we had to do is paint flash. So if you think about all the time we we're spending doing stuff that was not actual tattooing, yeah. Now you can just spend all that time tattooing, you know? So, I mean, I don't know. Is it good? Is it bad? I, you know, like, do you, pe should people still know how to make needles? I don't know. They'll never, they'll never need to. Should we know how, should we know how to cut acetate stencils? You know, like. That's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, how, like you said, how far back do you go? Yeah. Where's the line? It's a little bit like DJing. Think of it as an analogy, DJing as an analogy, right? Yeah. I used to DJ back in the nineties a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. on, what was your DJ name? <laughs> DJ <laughs> and um, you know even final records had the tech twelve hundreds and you know you yeah. had to fucking beat match there was an art to it right right and you know, and you had to go buy the records and flip through all the fucking white labels in the record store and yeah you had to be committed and passionate to it then you had to figure out how to do it physically right 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 when, right. when DJ changed to CDs and now MP3s mm -hmm. you've taken all the tactile away from it. You don't need to go to the record store anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's so much of it now. And it's, I think it's a good parallel to the tattooing story. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah, yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah. Now, but maybe, and I don't rave anymore. I don't go out anymore. But I would think that there's a big difference between what it sounds like, like you said, maybe a little bit soulless with the new DJs that just yeah. press buttons and, and you know, your, your beat mixing. Yeah. Fuck, you know, you've got automated systems that beat match, BPM yeah. match songs on the computer. Yeah, and it's not yeah. like you know, okay, remember the, the tech twelve hundreds had a little dial. You could mm -hmm. slow the record down, speed the record up, and you had to listen to two different songs and get them on the same beat and then mix them. It was very different to what's going on now, right? Yeah. Well, it's almost you know, like, like everything's you know, it's hard to know. I mean, even with like with music, with hip hop, with auto tune and all that, compared to like nineties rap that like we grew up with, you know, it's yeah. all. It's all filtered. Everybody's Instagram photos are filtered. Like you, you know, it's it's well, it's kind of the same thing. thing. Like it has no soul. You don't know what's real yeah. anymore. That's the thing. I mean, especially with AI now and fucking yeah. the AI art. People, yeah. I mean, we I haven't had it yet, but I, I'm hearing in the shop people are bringing in AI generated art to get tattooed on them. It's an actual tattoo designs. Yeah, I see tattooers posting it like. You know, they'll they'll say it's AI, but they're posting it as if it's their own, you know, like concept art. Yeah. At least they say it's AI, but they're still kind of posting it as if it's their art. Which is, it's your like keyboards, no you know, like, like, yeah, I, you know, fucking go do a painting. Just stop. <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> Alex was saying the other day, you know, and I tend to agree with him. And I'm, I'm going more and more to Alex's thing is that that kind of tattooing has nothing yeah. to do with what I do. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, yeah. So I'm in, do. I'm in the same camp. When he said that, you know, I mean, I think we're all kind of in that same camp. I'm, I'm also like just being in a private studio. You know, you're, you're more immersed in it because you have a shop with you know a dozen people doing all different styles, so you have to see it all the time. I'm so fucking far removed from that. It's like, I don't even know what, like, what's the tribal armband of today? You know, like, what's, <laughs> I, you know, I, I honestly, like, don't know. You know, I'll see a little bit of everything at conventions and stuff, but it's like, pretty much all my friends do Japanese style, you know, all the yeah, people I, I do. I don't know what to call it. It was the under boob dot work thing for a minute. Yeah. But I don't Is know. it these little stupid fine line trinket tattoos that I see on people at coffee shops? ones that are gonna go away yeah everyone's fucking getting dude. Yeah. even dudes are getting armfuls of that shit yeah right. yeah that's weird <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah dude. but i don't get it you know yeah I mean? 
I, I, mean, look, I don't get it either. It's like, you know what I think it is? It's like, and you see some of these tattooers who like, they do these little one line, like a little wave, just a line, right? And it's, I mean, it's well done, right? It's not easy to do. It's stupid, but like, and it's going to fall out, but they have like millions of followers. And I think what it is, it's, it's tattoos for people who don't really want tattoos or otherwise wouldn't, because it's so subtle, right? And it can go unnoticed. So I think you get, you know, it's tattoos for people who wouldn't otherwise get tattoos. You don't like tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> I don't know. It's a weird thing. But it goes but, back to the same, right? We're, what we do is a different thing altogether, right? We're, mm -hmm. Traditional yeah. Japanese, specifically because it's full body, because it's dense and heavy. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to, have to like tattoos, want tattoos, be into tattoos. Yeah. And especially with the Japanese, with the meaning and the stories and the history, you know, you have to seek it out. Yeah. Very different to this Gen Z millennial kind of stuff that's going on now. Yeah. Yeah. And besides, you know, there's a lot to it. It's, it's like it's a huge commitment to wear that right it's a huge yeah. commitment to a long process that's also very expensive time consuming and painful, painful. so <laughs> yeah so i mean you know yeah. it amazes me that there's as many people getting body suits from us as there is you know and on top of everyone else it's like it's such a i mean i you know we both have full body suits right it's like yeah. that's a it's it's a huge endeavor and you have uh, to want it you have to want, you have it. To want it yeah and you know you also have to make time for it and you also have to be able to afford it yeah and healing it man healing it's yeah. just as far bad as yeah. getting it oh you know yeah I mean? yeah yeah <laughs> i've had some awful fucking just horrendous healing not because the work not because it was over i mean it was well done work that healed perfectly but was just terribly painful the whole time sometimes you, sometimes you just stick to the fucking bed sheets and you got two yeah. weeks of pain <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, now, yeah. What, you, what do you think of um, the second skin stuff that everyone's using? Oh, like Saniderm? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't like it. I mean, it, I'm, right? I'm not We're a having fan. A lot of problems. Um, <laughs> We're having problems with people getting reactions from the adhesive. Yeah. Yeah. So adhesive's always been an issue with like different medical tapes and stuff like that. Like, um, you know, I, a fresh tattoo. Just, I mean, yeah. on an outline, maybe. Yeah. But you know, these fucking people putting big, like a half sleeve yeah. piece on, especially colored full tattoo, mm -hmm. and massive, massive fucking issues with it, right? Like, yeah. I'm on the verge of bringing it from the shop right now because. Yeah. I, have... I think there's certain instances where, um, like, it, it really does make the tattoo less uh, sensitive. Right. In terms of like, OK, let's say you, you get a bunch of work done around your waist and you yeah. got to go sit on an airplane for six hours yeah. after, you know, that stuff. It may it feels like a piece of second skin. I still I don't like it for the same reasons as you. First of all, I think it's unnecessary. Like I probably should say this, but like I rarely even cover stuff. Right. I think right. the hair should get to it. Yeah. And people are like, oh, I, I use this. I, I have people wrap it for three days. I have people do this, but look how well it heals. It's like, well, I don't fucking hardly ever do shit. And like my work heals better than anybody's, you know? Because um, yeah. I, I just think the air should get to it. I, you know, it's it's clean, you know, if it's something exposed and y'all wrap it. But like, you know, I, I think it's better to let the air get to it, let it start drying up and let that healing process start sooner as opposed to prolonging it by keeping it sealed off. Right, I'll right. tell you what that fucking Saniderm is good for, though, is what it was designed for. So it was, to my understanding, it was designed for burn victims. Right. And, uh, dude, you ever get like a, you know, I cook a lot, of, so I burn myself cooking all the time. And uh, you ever get like a, a burn and then you get the blister and when the skin comes off, it's just raw, like raw yeah. skin that even the air hitting it, you know, <laughs> let alone rubbing your fingernail. You put that Saniderm on it and you can scratch it with your fingernails and you won't feel anything. Yeah, right. But that's what it's made for. So, right. you know, it's it's great for that. But yeah, I, I yeah, I, I think it's lazy. I think for mm -hmm. uh, for I mean, I see artists that they cover someone in sand air and they're like, yeah, hey, I'll just take that off in four days, and that's their character. That's structure. ridiculous. That's fucking you know ridiculous. I mean? You need to wash like, that thing. Like you need to like, fuck man, talk to the fucking person, dude. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Like I use cling film. I tell people to wrap it first night so they don't stick to the bed sheets and see how they are the next day if it's still seeping. Because I mean, my stuff's very dense, right? So there's a lot of weeping mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah, and especially if you're tattooing, you're in Silicon Valley, so you're all fucking dealing with uh, you know computer keyboard dudes. I yeah, tattoo a lot yeah. of tradesmen when you're outside working with nylon long sleeve shirts and stuff. And yeah, and that nylon shit will fuck a fresh tattoo up. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, the other thing, you know, like most people don't think of this, but like, you know, and I should I should probably tell people, but it's like wash your fucking sheets. You know, yeah. Before yeah. you're gonna sleep, like, don't go to bed in a with a fresh tattoo and dirty sheets. Especially if a dog or a cat or something. Oh, well, that I, yeah, yeah. I know someone who got a really bad infection from not one of my clients, but um, someone who got a really bad infection. I was like, do your dog sleep in your bed? I was like, yeah. I'm like, well, yeah. You probably got dog shit on your tattoo, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they do wound up in the hospital. So, you know, right. that's the thing. It's like, yeah, keep your pets out of your bed, you know, wash your sheets, wear clean yep. clothes. All these things. It's, 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 it's just, it's crazy because it's like, that's common sense, right? But, you know, a lot of people don't think well, of it. For people who aren't dealing with blood and open wounds frequently, you yeah. know, yeah. may not be something that even registers in their fucking head. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying, yeah. like. You know, the sandworm stuff, you're telling people leave it on for four or five days and peel it off, your tattoo's healed. Mm-hmm. I mean, how time on day two or three, it's already corners peeled off, mm-hmm. there's a, a shit in it, and you end up customer taking off on day two or three and yeah. ripping off the layer with the adhesive. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it can't be good. Yeah. And it's all coming from fucking China. You don't even know what yeah. the fuck's in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 exactly. And, you know, again, it's like everyone's got their methods, good work. From what I've seen, because I have a lot of different friends who tell people to do different stuff, if the work's done well, it's pretty much heals the same way, you know. I, yeah. I uh, you know, as long as you keep it clean, put a little ointment on there, you know. If you, as long as you keep it clean, like our bodies are designed to heal stuff, right? Yeah, all these. That's the other thing, dude. Is is like all these crazy tattoo related products you know it's just people I trying to make a buck <laughs> yeah yeah all these ointments and balms and yeah. you know it's it's all these it's different all- lotions that are like tattoo specific i'm like there's nothing about the fact that it's a tattoo that really needs to be addressed any differently than like yeah. than than you're treating an open wound like any other open wound you're just trying to heal that skin well, the only other of- difference because yeah. it's a tattoo is like keep it out of the sun well, the sun, exactly. But there's a lot of these yeah. companies, like, you know, there are all these different companies that are making these tattoo bombs and creams that are grifting off tattooers. Exactly. Grifting off. Yeah. I don't sell yeah. that shit here. We, we give people little tubs of Vaseline dry skin lotion. Yep. Right? Like old yeah. school, like 30 yeah. years ago, like my boss used to do. Little fucking yeah. little thing of that. Here you go. It's free. I don't sell people yeah. shit, man. I charge yeah. you a ton of money for a tattoo. I'm not going to sell you a $5 fucking cream. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel exactly. good about that. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But we, yeah. we get asked all the time to stock this stuff. I'm just like, no, nah, man. I, no. I don't believe in that shit. I don't believe right? in it. I think it's, you know, a lot of those companies are just parasites trying to, like, make a buck on something that, like, we really don't need, you know? Exactly. It's like, it, you know. And, uh, you know, I get it. People, you know, the thing is, is, like, people buy that stuff because they, they really want to take, they want to take the best care of their tattoo. Right. Which is also what makes them good clients. Right. You know, they're going to take care of their tattoo, but they, you know, so they don't mind they're spending all this money on the tattoo. They're like, okay, well, if I have to spend 50 bucks on aftercare stuff, you know, it's worth it. But it's like telling you people like you don't need that shit. It's a waste of money. You know, that sun, sun cream, man, white yeah. zinc on your heel tattoo. Yeah. Stay out of the sun. That's yeah. how you make your tattoo last. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you don't go in the sun very much, do you? I mean, I got a lot of sun the past few days. So I was in Puerto Rico, but <laughs> but no, no. I mean, I like the sun, but I don't know. I mean, if I'm on vacation, I'll sit out in the sun. But I, mean, I, I get some of my arms on the farm and stuff. But I mean, I'm fucking yeah. fifty something. Yeah. Yeah. But I've got I mean, I used to get fun. I used to get a ton of sun on my my arms are pretty. I mean, it's twenty three years old my sleeves but you know and it yeah. looks about that but i think <laughs> tattoos i also think tattoos should look the age that they are you know people want to 
go back and rework stuff and freshen stuff up. You know, it's like if if it, if it's not done well and never looked good from the beginning, that's one thing. But, you know, I've always been like, I want my tattoos to look the age they are. You know, I don't want to look like a, I don't want to look like a 46 year old dude who got sleeves last week. So here's the, here's the question. Uh -huh. What's your, what's your take on this, on the, um, we'll call it a meme. The, yeah. uh, tattooers with shit tattoos are usually better tattooers than tattooers with great tattoos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got sleep. I have, I have one answer to that. I have sleeves for Matt Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, you see these 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 young kids that have the perfect fucking sleeves and the perfect stuff, and they're not always the best tattooers. But the guys with the, like I had ratty fucking sleeves for years. Yeah, I think there I think there's some truth in that because I I'm kind of an exception in that regard where I was like I was afraid to get tattooed for a while and. um and then by the time I started, I had very little tattoos when I got into, when I started my apprenticeship. So by right. that time, I knew who was who and what was up, what? And I was well, fortunate to- We were in California, man. I was fortunate to be in San Francisco in the yeah. 90s. It was a mecca for tattooing. Like, That's the place, but we came from there, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, I've got a bunch of like weird shit on my leg that I just got like, but purposely, you know, save one part of my body to just- get tattooed by the guys I worked with when we were bored, you know, but, yeah. but it's like, but yeah, I kind of like, I get it. I see why, you know, a lot of tattooers wind up with bad tattoos. Cause you, you know, you're, you don't have money. You're bored sitting around the tattoo shop and you get tattooed by the other people who are just learning, you know, and you're just super, super keen to get fuck. I was just super keen to get tattooed yeah. when I was 16 yeah. years old, 17 years old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was getting fucking black and gray fucking garbage on my arms from yeah getting head down the road you know what i mean yeah and uh, yeah yeah i mean i had all that shit lasered off and had fresh stuff put on yeah but uh yeah i mean i had a ton of shit on me dude just because yeah. i wanted to be a dude and canada in the 90s it was pretty slim pickings you know what i mean <laughs> yeah 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 and then you know you're young dude you don't know any better you don't have any fucking money it's like you know yeah. it's it's different for me i just i, I it, it, it was, I was just afraid to get tattooed until, you know, like I got a couple tattoos and then I realized I wanted to start tattooing. So I sought yeah. out an apprenticeship and which was incredibly difficult, partially because I, didn't I, want, I, want to talk about, I want to talk about your apprenticeship and this hard ass motherfucker that you apprenticed under. Mm. Mm. So yeah, <laughs> I've been trying to get into tattooing for a couple of years, just going around to every shop locally and, they pretty much just kick you out, you know, for even asking. And now I understand why. Like, no one was going to give me a chance. Now I, I, I know why, and we can go back to that. Because um, I wouldn't have given someone like me a chance either. Um, so, but I had made friends. I had made friends with this one guy who had done some tattoos on me. And um, he's like, he's like, uh, I'll never teach any, if I ever teach anybody ever again, it'll be you, but I'm never teaching anybody ever again. So, but I'll help you, you know? So he would like give me drawing exercises and I'd go home and I'd do a bunch of drawings, bring them right back to the shop. And he's like, damn, you work hard. You know, I know you're going to do this. Um, you know, and he helped me out a lot, Stu Carl. And then one day I went, went in there and he goes, Hey man, some dude just opened up a tattoo shop over on third and Norfolk in San Mateo. He goes, I don't know nothing about the dude. Maybe go check it out. So it was all my birthday in 1999. And I drove over to that area. I saw there was a tattoo shop. Thing was like totally empty inside, nothing on the walls, one little workstation in the corner. I walk in the back and I meet Turtle, who Turtle had just moved here from New Jersey and opened that shop. And uh, he just, you know, he'd worked in a bunch of, bunch of pretty gnarly shops, like shops that are open all night in the Jersey shore. And, you know, he just had a, he, he, uh, you know, had a, a rougher upbringing in the industry and, uh, he was looking for someone to teach. So, I mean, my, my apprenticeship essentially started that night. I wound up staying there till midnight and he was like taking apart tattoo machines with me by the end of the night. So I went, I was doing construction at the time. So I was there seven days a week after work from like five to midnight, all day, Saturday, noon to midnight, Saturday, Sunday, you know, for probably six months. And then, um, I started tattooing, was able to quit doing construction and was just tattooing full time. And a few months after that, 
he, you know, the whole time he was, he was kind of struggling. His, he and his wife didn't really like California. Um, they kind of wanted to move back. So he basically sold me the shop and moved back to New Jersey. And that was after, you know, I, I had only been tattooing for six months or something. So it's like 22, barely knew how to tattoo, owned a tattoo shop, but the shop's still there. 25 years later. <laughs> so it's a testament that you put in the work and you gave it a fucking. Yeah. You know, yeah. You kept yeah. It close. But you have to, you know, it's tough because I knew a couple, of, I only knew a couple other tattooers, but I like, you know, it's tough for me because I didn't work with anybody. I mean, I had, I, I hired people, but it's like, you know, it's just different. Like I didn't have that opportunity to work in a shop with a bunch of dudes who are way better than me, you know, right. which is, kind of good and bad i guess that's part of why my work is very much my work you know because i like i was not influenced really by anybody but i knew i had to make i knew i needed resources and i also wanted to get tattooed so i just i i learned a lot by making friends with people i was getting tattooed by like getting tattooed by the right people and then you know um learning from them yeah, no, that's, that's a good strategy. That's a good, yeah. great strategy. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about Turtle. What was Turtle like? Um, you told me in the past he's a bit, a little bit rough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was just like, you know, he grew up like uh, in New Jersey. Um, just super Italian, you know, Jersey yeah. Shore. Uh, right. He worked for this dude who sounds like a pretty gnarly dude who owned a bunch of tattoo shops and strip clubs. And as Turtle said, he was tri- dr- drove around in his Cadillac all day collecting money from people, you know? <laughs> it's kind of like, forgot to take out the trash, go in the bathroom and give yourself a black eye. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was, it was good. And I mean, for me, it was just kind of like, I hadn't been around a lot of people like that. <laughs> I grew up in a pretty like, pretty like, upper middle class neighborhood i was boy scout uh right, race, race, boy race scout. bicycles you know <laughs> it's pretty far removed from like you know yeah. from that culture from, yeah yeah and he just you know it's just different like he'd get in fights and you know you know it was the the neighborhood was a little bit rough it's all gentrified now it's a little better but i mean at that time it wasn't the best neighborhood you know and we had some shitheads coming in that had to be physically removed at times and you know but yeah it was a interesting year <laughs> so where you're at now with your work you 25 mm-hmm. years down the track yeah do you still feel the same passion and love for it as you did yeah more more so yeah 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 even what, more what, so especially over the last few years because now that like you know, now, hmm? no, no, go ahead. Yeah. Ever since I sold the shop, I, I, uh, now I can really just focus on my work, myself, my clients, you know, right. and I don't have all the other, I enjoyed owning a shop, but as, as you well know, you know, it, it takes a, a lot of energy, you know, and there's well, a yeah, lot of things. Of my face is half my energy is to my career, my career. I mean, I'm booked out for probably 14 months right now, solid. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've got my shop that I have to run an admin and babysit all mm-hmm. the people that work. Yeah. You know, it, it yeah. does drain on your, on your limited resources, right? It does, you know, and, and, and you can hire people to do a lot of that, but at the end of the day, it's your responsibility because those people you hire could fuck up or they could leave, which I know has happened to you a bunch of times. Um, so yeah, it's just, I, I like it better now because I only do the thing I love, which is drawing and tattooing. And I only do, th- I only take on projects that I'm excited about, you know, I turn down do a lot more people, than I do. Do you knock people back for work that you don't want to do? Yeah. I, I mean, not, do, you, do you kindly uh, say, listen, that's not for me. I don't want to yeah, do that. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. And the nice thing with the private studios, it's harder to do in person, but I have like that filter in place where they, they have to contact me via like text or Instagram or email or whatever first. And I'll like ask like, well, what are you interested in having done? And, 
you know, if they're like, I want to get a Mickey Mouse back piece, and I'm like, that's, I'm not, I don't think I'm interested in doing that, or that's not, oh, no, but I want it in your style. It's like, that isn't my style. There's no way to make that my style. <laughs> you know? That's always the best one. Like, you know, I want to get yeah. this fucking insert, whatever weird idea, but I want you to do it in your style. But that, that has nothing to do with my style, you know? Yeah. So, I'll t yeah, I'm, I've gotten really good at saying no, you know, because I just know that, like, if I feel bad and say yes, or I'm like, ah, I think I can make this work, you know, but by the time the appointment comes around, I got to do the drawing. I'm just kicking myself in the fucking ass for like even taking that on. And I hate it. Then you you got to look at the fucking thing for 40 hours while you do it. Yeah. So, you know, I learned that that was one of the things with like, when I transitioned from the shop to the private studio is that I have a, I, I now can have a heavy filter in place because people can't just walk in and talk to me. Yeah. You know, they have to go through that process before I'll even make them a consultation appointment. So by the time they have a consultation appointment, I have a pretty good idea of what they want. I got a feel for them. You know, I can feel people out pretty good through the, the, the way they approach me and the way they compose their messages and things like that. Um, yeah. So then do the consultation, make sure we kind of click, make sure we're on the same page, make sure I know that I have the amount of freedom that I need in order to do my best work and uh and then it goes from there but so, so where do you see yourself going for the next what, how old are you you're late 40s, 40s 46 right so mid 40s so you got another yeah. 30 years of tattooing left in you yeah 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 i mean i can't it's it, it's one of those things i can't see ever fully retiring it doesn't seem like yeah. retirement is something that most tattooers do you know they just <laughs> They'll cut it back a little bit, but, you know, they'll still, you know, they'll still work here and there. Um, yeah. You know, ideally, by the time you can barely hold a tattoo machine in your hands, you're just like, you know, you go to conventions and charge people 500 bucks to do your, your signature on them. And that's all you do. You know? <laughs> I think that's like what Lyle Tuttle did, right? The last several years of his career. Um, Joe, Monty. Joe Monty with his yeah. skulls. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was hanging out with Pat Sinatra at uh at the convention and she's retired and she was kind of talking about you know doing something like that i'm like you fucking should you know yeah so it's a way to do it but yeah i mean i can't see ever not tattooing i mean yeah. if i still love it as much as i do i love it more now than i did when i started you know um because it's just it's just better in in every way um now, so you you get around to a lot of conventions. You've done a lot of guest spots. Yeah. yeah. You seem to get along with a lot of people. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, it's, I guess we could say relationships are very important in tattooing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I've never had drama with anybody. Like, I, you know, I, uh, I found it pretty easy to make friends in this industry. Right. And, and make friends with, the, you know people I look up to, which is always cool too, you know? Yeah. 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 It's, it's like important. There's yeah. a lot of, a lot of tattooers who, you know, I don't, I don't know, never even thought I'd cross paths with who I really looked up to, who are just like good friends of mine now. I think most of the problems that I've come across in tattooing is running a business. I've never had a problem with anybody yeah. as a tattooer. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I've kind of saved yeah. myself from that a little bit because I was, I didn't do any, so that the convent, that the weird thing for me, like, so yeah, I do like a lot of conventions, a lot of guest spots, not as much as I was um, prior to 2020. But um, f I learned in the shop that I owned for 17 years, right? Or however long, it was. yeah, so, so, I think 17 years. So I did my first tattoo in that shop. I never tattooed outside of that shop for 15 years. Wow. Never did a single tattoo outside of that shop for 15 years from the shop I learned in. So, and then the first time I ever tattooed outside of that shop was um, at Kings Avenue. Okay. So, a, you know, talk about, you know, getting thrown in the deep end first. So fortunately I had a client, I was outlining, a, I started a sleeve on this girl, but it's like, you know, Mike Rubin on one side, Chris O'Donnell's here, Grez, you know, like, dude, just all these killers, right? And, you know, and, yeah. and, it, and also it's like, I only knew my own workstation, you know, it was ergonomically set up for me. So now I'm like working in this kind of makeshift, nothing's at the right height. I don't know where everything is. And like, 
it's kind of like when you do a convention, you know, it's as opposed to working at your studio, it's like nothing's at the right height. You're not using stuff you're used to. Like you, you have to really adapt. And you know where uh, fucking caps are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and it's like having to adapt when it's something like tattooing, which is something that's already so incredibly difficult and takes everything out of you to, you know, to with conventions, not so much guest spots because shops are usually pretty well set up with, you know, at least you're going to have a stool that goes up and down. <laughs> but, you know, dude, I fucking folding yeah, camp conventions chair. working from a, you know, fixed height folding chair that doesn't roll around and nothing's at the right height, you know, and, you know, tattooing at conventions can be super rough. This is what Gregor used to tell me was that because he used to back in the old days when I worked for him in the early 2000s, you know, he'd, he'd be working, he'd be getting cranky while he was working sometimes. And he's like, listen, I'm trying to put so much fucking effort into making these fucking tattoos right and perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like all of us, man, it doesn't come easy. You need, you need to work at it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the, the goings on in the shop, the distractions yeah. would make it fucking crazy. Right. And, mm -hmm. and this is why here, like I said, the only problems I ever had were, interpersonal relationships is business related you know it's yeah. not it's not tattoo i've never had a problem with clients i've had a problem with artists other than than dealing with business you know and mm -hmm. when you try to fucking work and people are like hey man where's the fucking paper cups for them I'm like fuck dude you see i'm fucking putting a stencil on right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so the the business side of things i mean i envy your position where you don't have those those distractions you know mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, it's you know, <laughs> it's a, it's a choice, you know. It's, yeah, it's it's like, yeah. There, I mean, there's also a lot of benefits to owning a shop, you know. Yeah, no, no, it's good, man. Like, I, I like, I like. I have a couple of apprentices that are on the long road, you know. Like, that's why mm -hmm. I, I go through them, right? You see me advertise for apprentices yeah. because, yeah, so many fuck, man. You know, I've had people that have put in like six months here paying yeah. the dues. Cause I want to weed people out. Right. That's the whole mm -hmm. point. I, yeah. you know, you, I, re I was reading this stuff the other day, <clears throat> people bitching about shops churning through apprentices, mm -hmm. you know, like using them for free labor and this and that and the other mm -hmm. and churning it all. The and that's totally the opposite of what I do. Like I pay my apprentices to work, right? Like yeah. a mutual acquaintance of ours who uh -huh. I won't name, uh -huh. he charges fucking 20, $30,000 to take Jesus. an apprentice. Yeah. yeah I heard that's, that. I had a guy yeah. here the other day. That's fucking, ex minutes. that's extortion is what that is. He charged the guy $40,000 to come into his shop and apprentice for three months and he kicked the guy out and kept the money. Yeah, that, that, you know I have a fucking about, issue with right? that. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and so here, I mean, I pay my guys, I pay them well, right? And they, they learn the business, they learn the fucking ropes. And then you get mm -hmm. to see what their character is because so many, you know as well as I do, and you've seen this a thousand times. You bring a guy in, you teach him a tattoo in the first month. What's mm -hmm. he fuck? He fucks off, mm -hmm. right? He yeah. made you anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And then you put a shitty fucking tattooer on the street. I like to. Yeah. You know, I've got two guys now that have been here for three years. They're fucking awesome dudes, and they'll be with mm -hmm. me forever. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I think that's important, you know, to pass on that the knowledge of what we're talking about, those values and those. Yeah. If we, and so many of our contemporaries. Um, Guys our age, a little bit older, that generation, <clears throat> they don't take apprentices. You know, mm -hmm. there's going to be a whole wealth of knowledge, and their kids aren't tattooing either. Yeah, a, you know, you're right, and we've yeah, yeah, disappear. that concerns me because we've talked about that, and that and th that does concern me a little bit because you know I'm guilty of that too. It's like I'm not I I taught one person how to tattoo, and it was a long time ago, so it's not relevant to what I could teach now. Right, but you should. Uh, yeah, but I don't, you know, the thing is, I don't have a use for an apprentice. It's it's like a couple different things. Like, not that an apprentice is free labor, but, you know, I don't need, I don't need someone like helping out around the shop. I clean my place myself. It's just me. I also don't want anybody else here. And my clients expect privacy, you know? Yeah. My clients expect privacy. So I can't have some, some other person, you know, just hanging around watching me tattoo and yeah. doing all this. It's not that I don't want to pass it along. So my way I make up for that is that, you know, when I go to conventions, wherever, like, I'm a fucking open book. Like, if you're a young tattooer and you meet me, if I like you, I'll tell you anything. And, right, okay. you know, 
and I just help that's out as much as I can. That's, yeah, way that's my way of giving back is, is, uh, you know, if, if I don't think you're a moron and you approach me the right way and I do it all the time, I did a lot of that over this past weekend. Like every time I do a convention is dudes will come by, hang out in my booth. Like I'll show them exactly what I'm doing. You know, I have no fucking secrets. They still have to go execute it, you know? And if, if, if they do, I mean, you know, but I, but I like to pass it along. I like to, I like to help people, you know, I like to give back and I've oh, yeah. learned a lot, you know, it's been many years. I've learned a lot. I feel like I have a lot of good experience and knowledge to pass along. Yeah, so, it's important. It's important yeah. the guy our age and our generation. This is why I do the podcast. Yeah. You know, because the yeah. first 40 episodes, 45 episodes were just me discussing this stuff, right. philosophy, ideology. Right. right. Yeah. The approach we're doing, right? Yeah. And that's why I'm doing interviews now. I want to talk to people like yourself and Alex and Dorsey. Yeah. And try to, you know, it's for clients as well, but also for tattooers to, yeah. to show them there's more than Instagram and TikTok and fucking mm -hmm. plug and play. There's yeah. a whole world of tattooing. Yeah. Of knowledge. Yeah. We yeah. must pass on. If we don't want to see tattooing turn to shit, right? Yeah. yeah. We have to instill these values in the younger people. And it's, mm -hmm. like I said, there's a lot of guys our age and older, the big name dudes, right? Yeah. Like I know Rupert all takes on apprentices sometimes. He's taught a few good dudes. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of guys that aren't, that aren't teaching, that aren't passing the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Their vast wealth of knowledge is just going to die with them, which is sad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas these shitty fucking tattooers and these, you know, all these um, new stuff, whatever you call it, they're mm -hmm. it's like wildfire. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's a problem. It's getting saturated with the wrong people, you know? And that ruins tattooing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it, you cover people and shit, you overcharge them. That's the big thing here is people overcharging, you mm -hmm. know, like rival shops, I don't have to say rival, but you know, local other yeah. shops. Yeah, you know, our my prices are the same now as when I opened ten years ago. No joke, we've not put mm -hmm. our prices. Right, mm -hmm. our minimum price is the same. Everything's the same because that's how yeah. you build a good business, right? There's places around the corner, you know, a little butterfly that big. They're charging six, seven hundred fucking dollars. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, right, you know, yeah, that that's absurd. I think. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Like, yeah, I guess pricing. Like, I don't do any one. I'll do one shot tattoos. Like, I'll do them at conventions. Like, if someone wants. You know, usually it's other tattooers and I want to get their hand or like, you know, fill in a little spot. But like, I don't do these little bangers on people off the street. Right. But, you know, back then, yeah, we would quote a price for it. But, you know, price, same for you. For us, we just do everything hourly. Right? Yeah. We yeah. Do all our big stuff by the hour. Yeah. Little stuff flat but range. I kind of do that. If I do a one shot tattoo, I still kind of do it the same way. You know, yeah. even though I could probably charge more, I just don't feel. You know, and I've raised my hourly, obviously, over the years, but. <laughs> also, Hold on. Uh, Stop. Wait, come is that your dog? <laughs> That's my wife's dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a sore. I brought him to the city to go to the vet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Boy. All right, peeps. I might cut this part out of the video. Yeah. <laughs> He's a, he's a farm dog, dude. He's never really been to the city before. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. He's un, uncivilized. <laughs> he's very uncivilized. <laughs> I've never seen him like this. He's uh, he's on guard duty. It's okay. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. You ready for it? Sniff, let him sniff your butt and he'll know where you are. See, now he's cool with you. <laughs> I'll cut that part out. <laughs> where were we before that happened? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, we were talking about pricing. We were talking about pricing and how, like, yeah, I mean, I've raised my hourly, but, you know, I, no, I raise my hourly as well. Yeah, but, but you kind of, you just kind of stay in line with what uh, what other good tattooers are charging. You know, yeah, I just you know with the shop itself. I yeah. try to keep the same. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Look, all in all, I think tattooing's. You know, like what we do is still there's a good direction. I think it's important that we share the knowledge, like you do, mm -hmm. and like I do, and 
you know, I would encourage other successful good tattoo. I mean, I don't agree. I say I don't agree. I would never make a video series on how to tattoo like me. No, no. And but, what's funny is the people who do are the people who shouldn't. Dude. And a lot of them complain, like, everyone's biting my styles. Man, you made a fucking video, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so the, usually the people making those videos are, or especially like, dude, if you just, I don't know if you've ever done this, uh, like go on YouTube and just look up how to tattoo videos. And it's like some dude in his kitchen, you know, <laughs> like <laughs> giving all the wrong advice. And it's like, well, yeah. Look at, look, look at the lettering guys, right? When lettering yeah. is big. In the like 2008, 2009, I was the lettering guy in Sydney. I was the only guy who did nice scripts, mm -hmm. fucking mm -hmm. you know, East Coast lettering or West Coast lettering. And I was busy with it. And then yeah. all those dudes put their books out, their like, four volumes of lettering. Yeah. And all, they all did it, right? Yeah. You know who I'm yeah. talking about? They all yeah. fucking did yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And now I don't do any fucking lettering. No one even gets fucking lettering anymore here. It's all yeah. computer font. Right. 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 But if yeah. you, I think if you've got a good thing going, you don't make courses on how to tattoo like me because it's generally <laughs> yeah. not a good model. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think it's fun. You know I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. You see a lot of the realism guys doing the, the video series and stuff. And, uh, yeah. But you don't see Japanese guys doing it. <laughs> Fuck no. Why do you think that is? <laughs> Listen, man, it's been a great yeah. talk Kevin. yeah it's been a great yeah talk. it was fun and we'll yeah. do this again we'll do this Absolutely. again we'll catch or something all right right on Look forward going, to it. i'll talk to you oh, soon bro thanks man right, cheers. see you Ciao. cheers Ciao.